This brings us back to our main question. You say that Russia attacked Ukraine so that Ukraine would not attack you, that is, so that there would be no threat. Yes, there is such a thesis, stop the enemy on his own land, so as not to fight on his own. Stop the enemy in his territory. Are you reading? Yes. We defend ourselves. We are denied the right to defend our own borders. Russia has never attacked anyone in its history. Who was the first to attack Ukraine? You said that in the 14th year the troops came. Let's forget about the 14th year. In the 22nd year, who attacked? On six fronts. Russia introduced troops. Are they lying? Further. All responsibility for possible bloodshed lies on the conscience of the regime ruling the territory of Ukraine. The Orthodox Church should officially proclaim Zelensky as the coming of the Antichrist, the official Antichrist. Here's to our guys who are fighting this filth right now. We stay on the side of these temples, on the side of the Mother of God, on the side of Christ. Inhabitants of the village spoke about the atrocities of Ukrainian soldiers. We should consider them terrorists. The Ukrainian armed forces, desperate to hold back the Russian armed forces offensive, began a massive use of phosphorus-filled munitions in the outskirts of Kiev. Our losses are seven to eight times less than those of the enemy. First of all, we are thinking about the lives of every Russian serviceman. Can I ask you a question? If you had seven or eight times fewer casualties than we do? In that case, where is your contract army? Yes. What number was today? 190,000. Those who died on your side? I don't know. Television gives you information. From our side? From your side. There is no information. You have 6,000 dead on your side. This is the last thing Konoshenkov announced. Because, there really is no such information. No, the last time he announced 6,000 people. Which is correct, 6,000 or 190,000. You are like a man who has seen the dead who are not taken away. Yes, I saw about 20 corpses a day. The truth lies somewhere in the middle. If that were the case, then you would not have been mobilized. You wouldn't be mobilized, you understand? Your contract army would be left unscathed, you know? It is clear that the army would have coped without us. Well, of course. You had a million army, 200,000. You entered. Six months later they were gone. We have a chronology of all the interviews. The chronology of all the interviews. First there were contract soldiers, then, when they ran out, recruitment for military units began. The generals persuaded the soldiers to sign a contract. Then there were volunteer soldiers, then there were mobilized prisoners. Is it all right to recruit convicts? I think not. If there are 190,000 dead, and there are more wounded, are there a lot of them? There are always more wounded. There is always more. There is a universally accepted global coefficient of three for any conflict. So, if 190,000 dead, let's just multiply it by about two. About 400,000 wounded. 600,000, that's all the math. Contract servicemen are out. In order to rebuild, another 300,000 were recruited. They announced 300,000, but there's more. After all, no one said there were only 300,000 of them. 
Theses that read, we don't want war, we only defend ourselves. To defend ourselves, we will attack a neighboring state, and our adversary bears full responsibility for that war. We lived peacefully, we were attacked, and were responsible for that? The leader of our enemy is initially evil and looks like the devil. Yes, there is. How is the devil? No, I'm talking about your leader being ridiculed in our press, on television and on the internet. We are defending a noble cause, not our own special interests. Yes, that's what we think. It's a great idea that we're following. But you didn't want to come here? He had a choice, either prison or war. And money. The enemy intentionally commits atrocities, but if we make mistakes, it is without intent. So for 30 years we lived peacefully. We didn't bomb our cities. And so a 20-year-old guy sits with me for an interview and says that at 4 in the morning we hit Kharkov with 12 cars. What is 12 times 40? We made 500 volleys out of 12 cars. The enemy is using prohibited weapons. Our losses are small, the enemy's losses are significant. We talked about losses. Our cause is supported by recognized intellectuals and artists. Yes, intellectuals who are comfortable in this system, who are paid to propagandize, support it. It is a sacred cause. Yes. A holy cause? War is not a holy cause, it's just a thesis. Whoever questions our propaganda is helping the enemy, he is a traitor. But now new laws have been introduced. Yes. Have you seen this video? No, I haven't. One country and its future, one president and one victory. Are you reading this? There can only be one approach. One country. One president. One win. So, I will begin by saying that modern Ukraine is entirely created by Russia as a result of the secession, the tearing away of part of its own historical territories. Of course, no one asked anything of the millions of people who lived there. I'm talking about the situation in Donbass. For eight years, endlessly, eight long years, we did everything we could to resolve the situation peacefully, politically. All in vain. Interesting? Yes. Shall we continue watching? I think yes. The killing of civilians, the blockade, the brutal treatment of people, including children, women, the elderly, does not stop. As we say, there is no end in sight. It's impossible to look at what's going on there without compassion. It was simply no longer possible to tolerate all this. This nightmare had to be stopped immediately, a genocide against the millions of people living there who only hope in Russia.
Det var for slet. Og der var egentlig provokatoren der, at vi fandt ham hos os. De var lige med at tire kjøtten. Artistisk kjøtten beide. Nei, det er sånn at det er ikke det tørre tatt. 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 Det er ikke det At the same time, our plans do not include the occupation of Ukrainian territories. We are not going to impose anything on anyone. The Russian army is not occupying Ukrainian territory and is taking all measures to preserve the lives and safety of civilians. I stress that the strike is carried out only against military targets and exclusively with high precision weapons. Intellectuals. The Ukrainian language has become the image of Russophobia. Do you understand? Those phrases that we hear in the Ukrainian transcription or pronunciation, they are for us and for the world in principle, but for themselves they are a formulation of hatred for Russia. So it was very scary to me if subjects were taught in Ukrainian. It's a disaster. It's absolutely a landmine embedded in this whole story. Why not really set up such a little local Zaporizhian gulag, neat in the steppe, under the blazing sun for teachers who have not yet learned to love our beautiful homeland? Two million people had to leave Ukraine or be denazified. That is, annihilated. Drama theater in Mariupol, 300 children. Fugus. We are shown the same videos, but we are told that this is it. It's their attitude toward people. That attitude. Nazis. Why did we live before you and nothing happened? And anyway, what do you care what we have going on here? I like this thesis, too. I mean, there are. There is a family, an apartment, a kitchen, and there is one hostess. Yes. What does the landlady next door care about how borscht is made in someone else's apartment? It's a different family, a different apartment. Yes. I like that, too. <clears throat> Understanding that. Even if you have. Nationalism. Nazism. This is happening to you. And. Why? Why should we come and solve your problems? You have your own police, power. And you are the ones who put your own country in order. You do what you think is right. Why is our participation needed? Here's the question I want to ask. Here he is. Yes, we have everything. The police, the SBU. 
and other law enforcement agencies. We lived without you. That is, if you, let's say, threaten our borders, then we need to strengthen our borders. But not. But don't overstep those boundaries and We'll go, we'll attack first, so we don't get attacked. But would we attack you? Yes. And before that? As we were told. That is. Ukraine was preparing to attack. But literally. We are several days ahead of you. You're an adult, you know? Unverified fact. This is nonsense. Already in 2022 our army was five times smaller than yours. Besides, we have no nuclear weapons. Thanks to you and the Budapest Memorandum, we got rid of nuclear weapons. And you were the guarantor that nobody would attack us. But you attacked us. There were two other guarantors. They sensed that something was wrong and started supplying us with weapons. England. And the United States. And you were our guarantor. In the event of an attack on us by any third party, you had to provide your armed forces. And your armament for our defense. Your entire empire is built on lies. You don't care about all the agreements that can be made. You interpret history the way your third king wants you to interpret it. I call it what it is. All kings interpret history as they wish. No. Why have you taken it upon yourself to justify your history? There is a world history with which all countries agree. Look, I went to school when the Soviet Union existed. Yes. I mean. That the war began in the 41st year. And we were told that. That the cause of the Bolsheviks is right. But now. Now that a lot of time has passed, I got different information. Now I understand that the Bolshevik cause was actually not so right. Now. I already told you that I changed my mind. While I was in school. What happened in Chechnya? War. Why? Another question is why in Chechnya, why in Afghanistan and why now? There is a contingent of Russian troops here. The question is, what are we doing everywhere? Are we fixing the situation? You keep trying to annex other countries, just with the whip. Dagestan. Endless counter-terrorist operation. Assisia. Abkhazia. Transnistria, Georgia. The First and Second Chechen Wars. Ukraine. In general, are there at least some three years when you don't invade anything? You also wanted to take over Ukraine in three days, just like the other countries. And they lead you to the slaughter. Yes, we are being slaughtered. Like some cattle who don't know what they're fighting for. More accurately, you were fighting to avoid going to prison, because in prison they would send you to war anyway. Hello. Hello. How are you doing? I'm fine. Okay, that's fine. Do you know that your husband is a prisoner? Yes, I know. If you want to talk to him, I need your consent to record and publish the conversation. Repeat it. I need your consent to publish the conversation. Do I have a choice? Yes, you can imagine. 
A person can have a choice, but your husband had no choice, he was sent to kill in a foreign country. Or to jail, he chose to kill. You have a choice, you can say no. Then we'll end this conversation, and I'll even have to cut it out of the video. I want to talk to him, so I give my consent. You don't say where you are and who you are with. Can you see me? Yes, I see. Hi. Hi. Look, I can see you're really worried. I am a prisoner of war and on the POW exchange list. I mean, here they keep us in normal conditions and treat us normally. I am alive and well. All parts of my body are preserved, I have no injuries. After the mine hit, I was just covered with earth. I remained in one piece. However, it turned out that Azov dug me up. I was with Azov. Now I've been transferred here, to the exchange fund. You are not in the exchange. You are in captivity, your wife must inform you if necessary that you are in captivity. You need to go to the recruitment office. How do you know I'm a prisoner of war? I got a call from the military enlistment office. I don't remember his name and surname. This is clear. First of all, there's nothing wrong with me. I'm alive, healthy, unharmed. Secondly, I am in a normal place, I am treated normally. I am waiting for the exchange. In order for an exchange to take place, there must be requests on our part. You need to go to the military enlistment office, tell them that your husband is a prisoner of war and that he needs to be exchanged. At the place of residence? Yes, I think that the place of residence. As it was explained to me, in order for the exchange to take place, you have to achieve it yourself, so that you and Sveta go to the enlistment office. You have to keep reminding them. Otherwise it can take a very long time. I understood. In principle, the situation is as follows. I'm just asking you not to worry too much. Don't worry too much, I'm fine. Now about. I had my bank cards with me, please block them. And that's all that needs to be done. Schwer, Gazprom. Tell me, please, how are the children and you doing? We're doing fine, Andrew. The children are healthy, they are learning, and I am also doing relatively well. But I can see the state you're in. Andrew, I have been in this state since September. I see. Here. That's it, say hello to the kids. I can't call from here. Here. I will do my best to resolve all issues as quickly as possible. Sooner or later I will be exchanged, but sooner rather than later. Okay. Please be strong. We're waiting for you. We love you very much. I'll be back. I love you. I love you all, too. Did you tell the kids, do they know? No. It's up to you whether or not to talk. I'm fine. You can tell them I lost my phone. Okay. See you soon, my dear and good. Everything will be fine. May I ask? Wait, he wants to ask you a question. This whole situation is made possible by bloggers, these guys. Accordingly, they have questions for you, too. Did you find us on YouTube? You probably know about us. No, I do not know. That's why you weren't too worried. If your husband had been killed, like the rest of his fellow soldiers, what would you tell your children about why he died? I don't know. Let's think about it.
Dad went off to war. What kind of war? What kind of war? The war between Russia and Ukraine. You're good. You call things by their proper names. So you would say to them, for example, children, your father is an occupant and went to kill Ukrainians in an independent state, or what would you say? What is his purpose here? I don't know what the president's goals are. This is the president you elected. We don't know his goals. I voted for a different president. She voted for Zhirinovsky. It's the same story with Zhirinovsky. He also. Of the choices we were given, I voted for the other one. No, let's not talk about that. At least one of them is already dead. I can tell you which answer is correct. If you want to. Your father died for the ideas of a bloodthirsty dwarf who decided to prove something to the world, but he failed. Perhaps you have a different opinion? I would say. I'll say so. No, you don't need to say anything. You just have to realize that you are now slaves, like serfs in the 20th century as collective farms. We've been talking to him for three hours, you have three czars, Lenin, Stalin, and Putin. No others. What can I do about it as a mere, mortal human being? You can go out tomorrow with a placard on the street in the center of your city saying take my husband out of Ukrainian captivity, and have someone take a picture of you. I'll answer for you. You can't, because you'll be afraid, and he'll be a prisoner of us, because you can't do it, you can't say anything. You can only be smart in the kitchen. And he came here. My place is in the kitchen. That's what I'm talking about. Because you can't say anything, write anything, think anything, because in exactly 15 minutes the FSB will come running. Live with it. Speak up. Nina, bye. I love you. Thank you for agreeing to be interviewed, and say hi to the kids. Sure. You're afraid to stand up for each other. Many of you don't want to talk to your husbands. I've heard from previous guys. They say the wives didn't answer the phone, and now they're wondering why. No, I'm not talking about those who didn't answer the phone. There are those who say, I don't want to talk to him. There are parents who say that. There are friends who say they don't want to talk. Perhaps they are afraid of the consequences. Is it possible to live like this? When you can't talk to a friend because there might be consequences. What's more, he's not some public servant, but an ordinary plumber or electrician. Even in agreeing to this interview, I also said that. I didn't say that, but I know that when I go back to Russia, I will be talked to, including by the special services. Perhaps this will have some consequences for me. Will you contact me when you are exchanged? Yes, sure. Tell me on camera? If that's what you want. Yes, you would be a deserter, in case you didn't know. Why? Because what will happen is that after the exchange, instead of rehabilitating you after your Nazi captivity, the FSB will sit you down at a table and make you write a statement, or rather a signature. That you will not contact anyone. If so, then. Of course, because you have a free country. And you are free citizens.
It's clear, I thought. The cattle must be in the stall. No improvisation, no. I see. No wiggling to the left or right, no disagreement. They don't like the fact that you're coming back from captivity. Because you have other rumors of captivity there. It turns out that the man will come back and say that he was taken prisoner. They gave me water. I didn't smoke and that's why I didn't smoke, I ended up with the Azov Nazis. They didn't cut anything off of me. That's a bad story. Yes. It's a good thing they didn't cut anything off. That's bad propaganda. When you come back, you will speak and you will be interviewed. You will say that you were forced to speak by force, you were threatened. There were 10 people in that room with machine guns, and you had no choice. Here's how it's going to be. You will not contact me. If you want, go to your own. I don't know what I wanted to say. If friends come here, let them bring cool clothes, t-shirts, shorts, because it's getting warmer. Cold clothes? I meant summer clothes, because it's getting warmer, you can swim and sunbathe. Maybe you shouldn't come here or you need to take more food. No, you don't need to take food, everything is here. Everyone decides for himself whether to go here or not. I am not a missionary and do not do any propaganda. No, I'm not going to make any appeals or statements. I just got some new information that I need to understand. Was that interesting? Certainly. New information? Yes. For example? About World War II and the fact that Lenin died of syphilis and Stalin died in some kind of vomit because they didn't help. People were afraid to go near him. That you are slaves. I'm just trying to explain it to you. Deep down, you are all aware and understand this. It began in the days of the collective farms and labor armies in the USSR. Read about it if you don't know. I know about collective farms. It's understandable. I mean labor armies, the development of distant countries, the construction of BAM. Once again, Solzhenitsyn writes about all this. However, you do not read it. I read. This is not taught. I read this. Yes in the history course I read, there is no such thing, not in the institute or in school. According to history, your Putin is a collector of Russian lands. First he destroyed Chechnya. You lost the first Chechen war. Yes, my brother fought between the first and second Chechen wars, at which time I lived. What did he say? How could such a huge country as the USSR lose to such a small country as Chechnya? With a population of 2 million people. No, I'm saying I know the war was lost. My brother served between the first and second wars, and I served during the second war, but... Then why didn't you manage to win the first Chechen war? Because the little people were united. Because their people were united, and Russia did not expect such resistance. We did not expect such resistance. Why did you win the second war? I think because their elites were bribed. Quite right. We won with money. You won with money, because the Kadyrov clan that you bribed won, and he killed his own. He conducted purges in Chechnya. And now you keep paying them large sums of money by paying them off. To loyalty. The same story happened to us. Because according to the forecast, you were supposed to grab us in three days, seven days at the most. There were guys who said, take food for three days. 
I see. The Russian guard entered in full dress uniform, with shields and bulletproof vests, and with batons. To ensure public order during the expected parade. But you didn't succeed. You were rebuffed. From Ukrainian Nazis. I met myself. Because then they start writing. You have shown me that in many matters I am incompetent. If you are incompetent, then what about the rest? They are more incompetent. I'll tell you more. When we were mobilized, when we got our first paychecks, I'm a family man, and my values are, respectively, family, apartment, closing a loan or whatever. Near Orenburg we stood for three months. Three months. And all the prostitutes and saunas were busy. All the alcohol we had was, flowing like a river. Because people have no imagination. How else? Do you want to surprise me with this? Every other person talks about it. I wanted to talk about the contingent of people. He stole and drank and went to jail. You send both the convicts and the downcast here. Did you know that your defense ministry recruits the downcast and humiliated? I heard about what Prigogine said. No, Prigoshin does not recruit because he has a vested interest. It is the Ministry of Defense that recruits. Now, when you go back to where you are, ask if there were any downcast and offended among them. They are literally downcast and offended prisoners, in a word, zombies. They, too, are at war. They also receive state awards. What do you think of this? But, in fact, I thought that. I believed that these prisoners who had gone through the war and survived would not be allowed to survive. A certain amount of them is necessary in order to show for motivation and to continue the story. Yes. Some of them are needed, but I think that on the second, third day they will find something for which they will go back to prison, and they will not come back from there. We don't know that because no one is getting in touch. Actually, I stick to your version. There is news that after half a year of war, such a prisoner survived, returned and walks there, keeping the whole village in fear. We just watched this video yesterday. Yes. Here. Who will win? In this war? Yes. Don't tell me that a peace agreement will be signed. Yes, it will be signed, absolutely. Yes? No, seriously. However, based on the goal of denazification, demilitarization, which will not be achieved, we will lose. Even without this goal, if we speak in a simpler language, then no one will understand what your king meant. 